Welcome Wednesday to Word, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going through some of these uh, continued technical uh, technical situations as I have, but uh, <laughs> I'm just grateful to uh, be able to bring it online. So good to see y'all on this Wednesday, uh, February the 10th. Amen. See y'all keep on coming on. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Y'all can hear me good, can't you? All right. Yeah. Send me up a few things. All right. Brother Richardson, I see you on there. Yeah. Am I coming through uh, clear enough for you? Amen. Yeah. All right. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. <coughs> That's good. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, Y'all can hear everything. Amen. I'm glad. That's it. Amen. Y'all keep on coming on for this Wednesday in the Word tonight. Amen. Yes, sir. Good to see all of you. Yeah. Appreciate uh, the opportunity to study with you tonight. Coming from Acts, the 14th chapter. Amen. Hey, y'all keep on coming. Yeah. That's it. Amen. Good to see all of you tonight. We can fellowship once again on Wednesday in the Word. Amen. We're going to be coming from Acts, the 14th chapter tonight. So you all can uh, open your Bibles and get ready for the 14th chapter uh, for our study tonight. Amen. We'll give a few more here and now a few more to come online and we'll have prayer and dive into our lesson for tonight. Amen. Appreciative again. Had a little difficulty getting on, but I'm here now, so God is good. Amen. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, got a good number on now, so we go ahead and uh, open with a word of prayer, and then we'll dive right into Acts the 14th chapter tonight for our lesson. Uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this time we've come together. We ask you to continue to be with us and guide us and strengthen us father as we study your word thank you for all that you continue to do and the development that you bring us all through each and every day in your son jesus name we do pray amen amen as i stated we're going to be uh coming from the 14th chapter of the book of acts so Let's get started. And let's dive right in. I'm going to be reading from the NIV uh, version. Uh, so feel free to follow with me, NIV or King James, uh, whichever your preference is. We begin with the first verse of the 14th chapter. At Iconium, Paul and Barnabas went as usual into the Jewish synagogue. They, there they spoke so effectively that a great number of Jews and Greeks believed. So here we are. We're seeing Paul and Barnabas in their travels. And Iconium they've come to. And interesting enough, we see here is that uh, the synagogue is not only uh, has Jews in it, but also Greek. So we see a fellowship of not only just the Jews, uh, but also the Greeks. And interesting enough, the Greeks, or in other words, Gentiles, believe also. And so uh, you, you can see how, at this point, uh, the numbers uh, for those that are believers has increased. Uh, it's increased uh, under Paul, as we were talking about last week. 
uh, it was mainly the Jews uh, that were converting over to uh, the, the Christian uh, belief, the new church. Uh, the Jews that were moving from the custom of uh, the Jewish thoughts and the Jewish practices over to uh, the following of Jesus Christ. And now we see here where uh, there are fellowshipping not only with the Jews, but uh, Paul and Barnabas are having the opportunity to speak to the Greek and the Gentile as well. So we see a, a change taking place in the, in the crowd that's being reached. So as we watch this change that's taking place, as we watch this, this growth that's happening in the new church, it says in verse 2, but the Jews who refused to believe stirred up the other Gentiles and poison their minds against the brothers. So, not only did they have Jews in their and Greeks that were hearing this new word and believing, they also had some of the starch Jews there as well that did not want to listen to uh, the message that Paul and Barnabas were speaking. And so as they were speaking the message of Jesus Christ and others, Jew and Greek, were listening and growing with that, you had your, 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 your Pharisaic type Jews in there that didn't want to hear that message that began to counteract what Paul and Barnabas were saying. So they began to speak things that would uh, deter the new from following what Paul and Barnabas were speaking. Uh, they had uh, uh, opposition in the church. Uh, <laughs> uh, some of you know exactly what that is uh, or have experienced that uh, before, but uh, not everybody uh, in the church is there for uh, fellowship with Jesus Christ. There are some there that are there because of custom, uh, that are there because we always been here. This is our church and all those type of things. And, and when representation of Christ is presented, opposition is brought about. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing uh, the Jews that don't want to hear about uh, this new church, this new Christ, uh, beginning to poison the mind of those Jews and Greeks that were listening and believing. So let's see what happens. It says, <coughs> verse 3, So Paul and Barnabas spent considerable time there, speaking boldly for the Lord, who confirmed the message of his grace by enabling them to perform signs and wonders. And so, in essence, what's transpiring is that, is that they weren't on a rush to leave, but they spent the time dedicated to speaking about who Jesus Christ was. I don't believe they were debating with the Jews that were trying to uh, uh, eliminate their voice, I believe they continue to tell the message, continue with a boldness to speak to who Jesus Christ was and why he was their salvation. And not only did the Lord enable them to speak with a boldness, but it says miracles and wonders and signs were performed. Now, I don't really know exactly what that was, but it sounds as if there was uh, um, somewhat of a, uh, a backing with what they were saying. Uh, one of the things that I could see as a sign and wonder would be that despite what was being done by the other side, that others were continually still growing. And so, in essence, as they continue to message and continue to speak the message, more people came in 
and listened to what was being said. So in essence, what the Jew was trying to do in, 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 uh, in, in, in downplaying them, the Lord showed that he was going to be more powerful than that and added to that. And so signs and wonders. I can see that uh, others looking and saying, well, if this is not true, why are others coming? Why is it going? So I, I can see uh, uh, a, uh, a direct um, uh, battle taking place, uh, but the Lord prevailing uh, in this message. That's what we see in verse 4. The people of the city were divided. Some sided with the Jews, others with the apostles. Verse 5, there was a plot afoot among both Gentiles and Jews together with their leaders to mistreat them and stone them. And so it looks like that even with what's transpiring, it's not being eliminated. So whatever they're doing is continuing to combat what Paul and Barnabas are preaching. And so, as it says, as, as, as it began to, to you know, the, 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 they, they used to the, the say that, that uh, the devil is, is, is always busy. Uh, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about it is, is that it seems like the more, uh, and some of you might know exactly what this is, the, the more you end the battle, the hotter it gets. Uh, it seems like the more I want to believe and trust and the more I get challenged, the more things come up. Just when I think that I, 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 I'm, I'm secure in my understanding and my faith, something comes to shake that. Something comes to challenge that. And that's what we see here. We see as they're continuing boldly to speak signs and wonders, it's not going away. The Jews that are against have not only draw some Gentiles on their side, but they continually are fighting against the message. And now they're planning a plot against them. It says in verse 6, but they found out about it and fled to Lyconian, cities of Lystra and debris and debris, and to the surrounding country where they continue to preach the gospel. So, uh, you know, I believe it was last week when we spoke, uh, Paul was speaking of, shake the dust from your feet. Uh, there comes a point in time where um, they will not endure sound doctrine. And it comes a point in time where, uh, and as we see in this case, is that uh, many were reached. Uh, the message was, was, was conveyed of Jesus Christ. But the but the but the but the uh, opposition uh, did not decrease, and not only did they not decrease, they had devised plans to even do more harm, and so the message was more important than the harm that they were planning to do. So at that juncture, they decided to leave. At that juncture, they walked away from. Uh, this situation. In essence, it, it kind of shows where uh, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. You know, sometimes we, we get involved in situations and we want to fight it. We want to fight it to the end. We want to, we want to, is the victory really ours or is it Christ? See, that's the thing we have to look at is that are we, are we really, are we in the fight because we believe God is directing it or is it, are we in the fight because we want to be victorious over this loud person over here that's doing all this talking. And so we, we, we find that um, uh, Paul and Barnabas, uh, when they come up with this plot to go against them, the decision was, let's leave. Um, you know, th this, is not, this is not our fight. Uh, we are not here uh, to combat. We're here to deliver the message. And so that's what they decided to do. They decide to leave. So then we find ourselves in verse 8. In Lystra, there sat a man who was lame. He had been that way from birth and had never walked. So here we are at another situation where uh, they come up to a man that was lame, that had not walked. 
Uh, you know, one of the things that I, I found interesting is that the Lord uh, seems to always find uh, an impossible situation to show his power. Uh, uh, a situation that, in this case, where a man has never walked before. And obviously it's known that he has never walked before. But to use his men, his instruments, his disciples to demonstrate his power. Because we see here in verse 10, or sorry, verse 9, that he listened to Paul as he was speaking. Paul looked directly at him, saw that he had faith to be healed. And so he seen in him that there was a desire to want to know more about this Jesus that he was talking about. He saw that this individual had enough faith to believe his situation could change. And so what did Paul do? It says he called out, stand up on your feet. At that, the man jumped up and began to walk. You know, it's interesting how how um, uh, we see here where Paul is is uh, uh, how can I put this? Um, he had a uh, a difficult they experienced a difficult situation in Iconium, a different situation where opposition was rising. In the church, even though many were coming, many were listening, many were being saved, but yet there was still opposition to the message that was being ministered, being spoken. It was determined based on, and see that's where, and, and the thing I had to, I had to really look at it and say, well, well, well what, what was the, what was the reasoning that you, right, you, you left uh, Iconium? But you, when you get to this situation and you see someone lame, you speak to it and tell it to get up. Why? Why not speak to the plot <laughs> and, 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 and embrace the plot because of the power uh, that, that, that's working within you? Uh, and, and then I have to, I have to, to come, to, come to, to, to the understanding again that this is not... Because as I was as I was I was looking deeper into that study, and I see a little bit later, and we'll see in the study, as Paul is his 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 attitude is not one of this is my message, and I think that's the key. He was totally submitted to God and what God wanted, not what he wanted, but what God wanted. And there are times where the Lord does not want you to fight that fight. There are times, and it might appear, I'm sure when they fled, it looks like they're scared. There are times where the Lord will direct you, and many of you know that. That's not your fight. But I'm going to look weak if I don't. That's not your fight. That's for you to walk away from. There are times where you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. You have to, you have to realize that it's not your fight. It's God's fight. He's got it. And when we listen to him, he gets the victory. What would it have looked like, had to go to this point too, if they would have overcome the plot, then it went from God being magnified to them being magnified. And that wasn't what the message was about. It wasn't about, because see, you have to remember, when they stepped in and started speaking boldly, there was a, a sense of, wow, look at them. And how do you know that? Because we're going to see that in a, in, a, in a little bit later into this lesson here. We're going to see how they were looked at. 
so you'll understand exactly what I mean. There are times when you speak boldly for the Lord, those that don't know him will look at you in a certain way. They will receive and see you as the salvation instead of Christ. And there are times where God does not want you in that fight. There are times where you're not running or hiding, but it's not time for him to move in that place. And that's where we have to, as we continue our walk in Christ, we have to remember whose we are. We come across, and the Lord allows us to come into a lot of understanding, a lot of teaching, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, experiences, and we have to understand that those aren't so that we can be powerful, we can be bold. It's so that we learn who guided us, because if it had not been for Him, we wouldn't have had those experiences. We wouldn't have had that education opportunity if it had not been for Him. And so when we find ourselves at a point or a place where he is using us, we have to remain the vessel and not the master. Remain the clay. And that's what I see here with Paul and Barnabas. I see them being the clay and not the master, not the potter, but they're being the clay. And being the clay, they weren't directed to fight the plot. But here they're directed to speak to. And what were they speaking to? They were speaking to faith already being seen. It says when Paul looked at him, he saw his faith. And so he spoke to what God had already touched. Hey, all right. <laughs> he spoke to what was already touched by the master. And when he spoke to it, it responded. It said he got up, he stood up, and he moved about. And then it also, verse 11, when the crowd saw what Paul had done, it says they shouted in Lyconian language, the gods have come down to us in human form. Uh-oh, look out. Here we go. Just what I just said. There are times when you move in the power of the Holy Spirit, you are the one that's looked at. Now, the Lord didn't want that in Iconia. But now, he allows them to speak with that power. And now that power is showered in the reflection of them. And that's what the people see. So now we got another situation. We got another predicament. Now the people see, wow, these individuals are, look at them. They're like Jupiter and Hermes. They're like the gods. Jupiter, they like, the, he's, he's, he's one of the, 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 the biggest gods that we have. And Hermes, Hermes is, 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 is the speaker, the chief speaker. And that's what Paul was representing. And look at them. Look at them. They have come down to us. So, in essence, they haven't changed from what they believe. They heard the message of Jesus Christ. But yet they're still believing in the gods of the air, the sea, and everything else. And now they're saying that these gods have come in the form of man and have come before them. And so they are receptive to what's happened, not because of the message of Jesus Christ, but because of the wonders that they have witnessed. And it says, verse, uh, verse 12, Barnabas, they called Zeus, and Paul, they called Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. The priest of Zeus, whose temple was just outside the city, brought bulls and reefs to the city gates because he and the crowd wanted to offer sacrifices to them. So here they go. 
They want to offer sacrifices. The king of the city said, let's get together an offering, sacrifice to these gods that have come in our midst. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of this, they tore their clothes and rushed out into the crowd, shouting, friends, why are you doing this? We too are only human like you. We are bringing you good news, telling you to turn from these worthless things to the living God who made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. In the past, he let all nations go their own way, yet he was not left himself without testimony. He has shown kindness by giving you rain from heaven and crops in their seasons. He provides you with plenty of food and fills your hearts with joy. So they're saying, hey, back up. <laughs> it's not us. It's the God that's watching over all of us. It's not Zeus and Hermes that have done these things for you. It's the God of my Jesus Christ that has provided for you. That continues to provide for you. That allows you to partake of everything that happens to you. And they did this with an earnestness. They did this with, with, a, with a point of, I, we want you to hear. This is not the gods talking to you. This is the God of all of us that wants a relationship with you. They are, the, the fight, if you can see, is different now. The fight now is what transpired after warning signs and wonders were seen. They, in this instance, did not see the opposition that was present in Iconium. The opposition here was not one of contradicting what they were saying. The opposition here was not recognize the message that was being preached, but looking at the action that's happening. And so they're not listening for the God that they're preaching about. And, and, I, and I tend to, to say a lot because a lot of times it's people's need. When I don't have a need, you telling me about how good God is, <laughs> I don't hear that. You know, it's interesting how you can talk to someone who doesn't know the Lord, and, and at the time, they're going through okay times, and, and you're telling them about Christ and how good Christ is, and they're looking at you and saying, well, you know, hey, <laughs> I'm good. I don't need that. Isn't it interesting how when we come to the point of <laughs> hitting the bricks, we tend to be more receptive to who Jesus Christ is. When we run into issues, we tend to be more receptive to who he is. They don't have a desire to change from what they believe. And so consequently, as it says here, I believe in 18, even with these words, they had difficulty keeping the crowd from sacrificing to them. I hear you, but I know what I see. <laughs> and what I see is what I believe, which is my gods have come down here and done this. How many are caught on sight for their understanding. That's why this walk is like it is, is because you can't base it on sight. You can't base it on what you see. That's not faith. 
You got to trust the Lord when it doesn't look like it's going to be good. You got to trust him when it's dark. You got to trust him when everything in you is telling you, don't be a fool. You have to trust him in spite of what you see. And the message that they're trying to get them to see is that you're looking at what we just did. But let us tell you about the God that's doing everything for you. The rain you had the other day, that's him. The crops that you got in your, that's him. That's all. See, you didn't see, you didn't see where the rain started from. But you got the benefit of it. You didn't watch the crops grow up. But you did go out and was able to harvest them. So what we're telling you is, the God that we serve, it's not that you see him, he see you. But the message was not being heard. And not only was it not being heard, says in verse 19 then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium uh oh you know the rebel risers that we talking about here over in the uh, uh, verse 7 uh, they didn't make their way over here where they are now devils always working <laughs> so they didn't make their way over so you know the ones that had the plot to do wrong to them over in Iconium. Now they didn't come over to where they at now. And it says uh, they stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city thinking he was dead. Now interesting. The people and I said something, I said well maybe I'm thinking too much but then I have to say the people we're looking at them as gods coming down into the form of humanness. But then the people allow this group of rebel risers to come in, grab Paul, stone him, and throw him outside the city. Wow. So in essence, they really wasn't even believing what they were shouting there about them being the gods. Because they didn't even attempt as it says here to stop them from doing this to Paul hmm. and then it says but after the disciples had gathered around him he got up and went back into the city the next day he and Barnabas left for Derby so in essence again the message was not heard. And I say that because we have to continue to remember who we work for. It would be wonderful if everyone that we spoke to heard the message. If everyone that we witnessed to would fall down and accept Jesus Christ and move forward. That would be fantastic, but that's not always the case. And we can't stop preaching that message and sharing that message and telling that testimony and telling that witness because it doesn't appear that it's being received. If there was ever an opportunity for them to stop right now, this would be it. They actually thought they killed Paul. Now, it doesn't really speak to that in here, uh, but either he was unconscious or something to that effect. It doesn't really say that he had died, but it's believed possibly that he was resurrected. I, I don't, it doesn't really specify that. All we know is he was stoned and they took him out and considered him dead. But yet, the other disciples gathered around him, ministered to him, and he recovered enough to go back into the city. And then they left the next day. I say, don't let no one put your light out. Don't let anyone cause you 
to doubt the God you serve. Don't let any situation cause you to put your light out. If anything, the message for, for tonight is stand strong in the word of God. That's what we see being demonstrated here. We see it standing strong against opposition and being strong enough to follow the dictations of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ and the Lord in leaving that situation and then leaving continually with a boldness because as soon as you got to the next place you spoke to a situation with a boldness that God had led you to speak to and in the midst of that you went from a point of awness to a point of worship from others don't allow that to cause you to steal uh, Paul and Barnabas had an opportunity. They could have received this worship that those folks were given, and they could have went mile high. How many do? How many do we see? You forget the message of Christ, and you take it upon yourself. You feel like your elevation, you feel like what you have accomplished has been you, and there you get. You get lost again. <clears throat> but they fought that. They still held strong to the message, which is Jesus Christ. And then we find in verse 21, they preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. Now, can you just imagine how strong their message was now? When you've gone through something, Please listen to me. When you've gone through something, we all have gone through something, okay? This last year and that, we didn't gone through something. When you've gone through something, you can speak to how good God is. When you're going through it and he's getting you through, you can speak to how good he is. Can you imagine the message they got now? Here Paul was stoned, considered dead, but yet he's still preaching the word. He's still drawing others to Christ. He's still considering the fact it's not me, but it's the God that's in me. That's the message we have to, don't give up, don't quit, don't stop. There are going to be times where we're going to be put in situations that are going to appear to be unbearable, but God is able and he will Bring about a new day. I don't know what it'll look like. I don't know what the situation will be. But I know if you keep your trust in him, he'll bring about a new opportunity of worship. A new opportunity to share the good news. A new opportunity. It says, when they beat him and threw him out, he went back into the city and still preached before they left. And others still came. That's what I'm talking about. That's the God I serve. When we do his bidding. When we follow his direction, he is the one that provides the increase, that provides the salvation, that provides the deliverance. He is the one. As it says in verse, uh, in the next, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Man, now, now I'm telling you, who better to tell you that than the one that was stoned and considered dead? We got to go through many hardships. I stand to tell you, I sit to tell you, I, I present to tell you today, you got to go through many hardships, as he says, to enter the kingdom of God. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust not in them but in god after going through uh, pisidia they came into philippia and then when they had preached the word in perga they went down to atlea here they are traveling sharing the good news witnessing to many and bringing about a change in the people of god from Atlilia, 
they sailed back to Antioch where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles and they stayed there a long time with the disciples. Trusting God, being fed, being healed, and being, most of all, delivered. We see that God delivered them through each obstacle that they faced. Some cases it looked like they were weak, but yet God was strong. And when I look at that, I say, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. We are weak in him. He is our strength. When I see people and going through it and doing what they might be in enduring, and I say, how? How can they continue to do? And it's because of the grace of God that's keeping them. It's not because of the doctors. It's not because of the, the medicine that they're on. It's not because of the, 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 the climate and the environment. But it's because of the God in which they believe. He is what's keeping you. He is who's keeping you. We are blessed to be the children of God. We are blessed to be in whatever situation we are in. All things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Paul and Barnabas had a rough road in this 14th chapter but they held to the faith it looked like when it started off it was going to be heaven on earth folks listening folks growing folks coming and then opposition rose and when it first arose the Lord chose not for them to confront it they moved to another place to spread the news. But that confrontation, that evil followed them. <laughs> How many of y'all been followed? Oh, yeah, I know. Your job is rough. You get a new one. Heaven on earth, right? Then after a while, you see that some of that same devilness that was happening at the other job <laughs> comes creeping in on this one. Somebody know what I'm talking about. <laughs> How many of you been in, a, in, in friendships, relationships, marriages, whatever it might be? Oh, yeah. Come to, I'm out. And when you get in new ones, it looks like, oh, it's all fine. And then guess what? It follows you. The thing that happened here is when it followed who was the victor? It states that they thought they had eliminated him. <laughs> but all they did was gave the Lord another platform to reach others. When he got back up and went back in that city, they ministered to many before they left and then went to many other places after that with a stronger message because of what they've been through. That's what I'm telling you. Whatever you are going through, I have been through, the Lord has given you another opportunity to witness. He's made you another platform that he can use. He's brought you through another experience that you can share that he has designed for your life. Don't let trouble run you out. You keep the faith and continue to trust God in the midst of your situation. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for demonstrating through your vessels in this message tonight. All things do work together for good for those who love the Lord. We thank you, Father, for those opportunities that you have allowed us to walk into, opposition or not. 
And Father, we thank you most of all for continuing to love us, keep us, and guide us through those situations. And Father, if we're in the midst of it now, we continue to seek you in our deliverance. Continue to watch over this nation as a whole, all of us, your people. Strengthen us as only you can do. Thank you, Father, for all that you have done and you continue to do. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hey, I'm telling you, ask is something else. And next week, chapter 15, it's going to be something else too. So y'all get into it and share with others to join us next Wednesday, 7 o'clock, so we can tackle and embrace chapter 15 of the book of Acts. I mean, I ask you to, tomorrow as you do your noon prayer, pray for our own sister, Marvestine Johnson, her family. And pray for God to continue to hold them. As sister Marvestine goes through what God already has seen and knows. We pray for his will. And we pray for their comfort. And I just want to say, God bless all of you. And continue to let the Lord lead you through everything that you do. He's guided us thus far. And we all have a testimony of what he has brought us through. Continue to trust him and continue to hold to his unchanging hand. God bless you. I look forward to seeing all of you on third, on Friday, Friday Fellowship, 7 o'clock, 15 minutes where we can lift the Lord, thank Him, and read some devotion and just have prayer of how good He is. So God bless you. Pray the rest of your week is blessed as your first part has been. And I'll see you all on Friday at 7 o'clock. God bless you. Love you all. Take care.